And it's about time that we took a look at a large cap US equity index. Hello everyone, Monty here, market analyst on IG with another technical cheat sheet video where we take a look at key technical indicators, which this one should be it's straightforward in order to formulate an overview so that we can prep ourselves from on the strategic front for whether you're in the conformist camp or the contrarian camp, expecting this no longer to be the case when it comes to its technical overview. We're also going to look at it whether it's in the weekly or the more turbulent daily time frame, as well as those levels for precision. Now, traders, where do they stand going into the event? It's interesting because when it comes to COT speculators for this index, they're in the majority sell. Uh, whereas when it comes to a couple other key ones, the majority buy, we're going to take a look at why that might be the case, as well as fundamental considerations, given that, well, let's just say most of earnings is out of the way generally when it comes to the US. And that means that maybe, just maybe, uh, the focus might tilt a bit more towards some of those other macro elements. Let's go ahead and start off. It's the S&P 500 top traded product on our end. And we're going to start off with the weekly time frame when it comes to its key technical indicators. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, prices above all its main short and long-term weekly moving averages with a DMI that's positive. I've actually plotted uh, the, uh, this is from the IG trading platform, but got it down over here where you've got a nice big margin between the plus DI and the negative DI. So making it positive, you've got an ADX, which in trending territory and has been rising in RSI down below over here in overbought territory and price, not too far off the upper end of what are clearly widening bands. So this is actually a pretty straightforward one in terms of formulating an overview. For the daily time frame. it looks straightforward today because we're not too far off record highs. It was a bit more complicated before, before the, uh, the stellar moves that we got last Thursday. Um, but for now, given we're, at, we're up here, price above its main short and long-term daily moving averages, a DMI that you know, we recently had a negative DMI cross just because of the proximity between the two and how easy it is on a shorter term time frame for these things to shift. But for now, it's got enough of a margin to keep it in positive territory. An ADX that recently fell out of training territory, only just in training territory here on the shorter term daily, an RSI that's not in overbought territory and price that's at the upper end of the band. So take a look at the weekly overview and we want to, we want to go ahead and formulate that technical overview. It's pretty much a bull average though. In the past, this would have been classified a bit more of a stalling bull. It did, not in the sense that price can't make higher highs. It clearly has been able to do so. The matter of, in terms of how much follow through does it offer intra week in order to give conformance breakouts the advantage. But on speaking of the conformance, in this case, what exactly is going to be the difference between a bull average versus a stalling bull overview? Uh, essentially, the, the same part is going to be that you've got buy breakouts off the first resistance. But when it comes to the first support, and this is for this week, by the way, the week of February 26th, uh, but off the first support, there's a bit more added caution. Uh, for conformance, buying after a significant reversal instead of after just a simple re reversal. And that, that's essentially the key difference between a bull average and a stalling bull. Uh, contrarians, by the way, pretty straightforward. And um, again, contrarian means that you're not expecting this overview to hold. You're going to see some pullback. So sell breakouts off the first support or selling after a reversal off the first resistance. So you're not fading the move, but you're going after a reversal. And the thing is, what about those who might think, okay, you know what, I'm not, I'm not really in the conformance camp, but I'm not in the contrarian camp either. I don't think it's the start of some sort of bearish move. I'm kind of in the middle anticipating a sort of hold or maybe undoing some of the gains that we've seen as of recently until the next cat catalyst or the next narrative comes into play on the fundamental front. If that's the case, you might want to work reversals off of both first levels. You can say, okay, if that's the case, I'm going to go for a sell after reversal off the first uh, resistance or a buy after reversal off the first support. And, and what exactly is the gap or the distance for the RSP for this week between the relative starting point or the, or the RSP as well as the first resistance, about 66 points, whereas it's going to be 33, again, at your discretion when it comes to, to, to the gap between the first, whether the first resistance or first support and its respective SL or stop losses. So what about on the daily time frame? Now, here's where it's a little bit trickier because, you know, just a, a middle of last week and a couple of these would have been neutral. So you got three, the, whether uh, price with respect to the Bollinger Bands, the DMI, because the gap isn't that high as well as price with respect to short-term uh, moving, uh, short-term daily moving averages, these can easily flicker from green to neutral. So at times you're actually borrowing an overview that's from its weekly, from the weekly uh, time frame, as well as the fact that when you're in this channel, you understand that within a bull or even a bear channel, you can understand that the movement within it can easily change the technical boxes. So formulating an overview just off of the technical boxes on the daily time frame is always going to be much, much trickier. And that means that if you want a bit more consistency, you want to, you want to stay a bit more grounded, you're going to need to borrow a little bit off the weekly time frame, which you don't really need to this time, but normally you would have to do that. And that's the reason why we've got the weekly market report releasing on Monday and for the daily market report Tuesday through Thursday. Now, the, the strategies are the same in terms of conformance and contrarian camp because of the fact that it's the same overview. 
But a lot of times what you'll notice is that you'll get some volatile upside movement, usually after a volatile downside move. So it kind of creeps up, creeps up, creeps up, big move, and then a big move that might come afterwards. And prior to what you might see in a stalling bull overview, and it's usually more viewable under a daily time frame because on the weekly, you're just seeing it creeping up, you know, move, slowly moving up. So you're not going to see this volatile down and then volatile up again. It's just sort of happening with a bit more consistency on the on the weekly time frame, which is why it's something you'll have to notice on the daily time frame. And those who want to trade a hold, by the way, because, you know, I mentioned how you have the conformance contrarian and those who think, you know what, I just think there's going to be a bit of a hold at these levels. Keep in mind, this is the daily time frame, not the weekly. So the levels are, are narrower. And that means that if you're trading a hold, you might want to go, instead of going for a reversal off the first resistance or first support, go for a significant reversal. So buy after a significant reversal off the first support or buy or sell after a significant uh, uh, reversal off the first resistance. And, and the levels, by the way, this is for the start of the week. You can expect it to be a little bit higher and you want to change the RSP. So if you're looking at this on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, you're changing up the RSP and you're adding up, depending on, on the anticipated volatility for the day, about 23 points from the RSP first uh, weather resistance or support and 11 and a half or rounding up 12 points when it comes to the SL. Again, for the stop loss at your discretion. So that's when it comes to, to the technical indicators, formally the overview, uh, the strategies, as well as the levels. What about when it comes to sentiment going into this event? Now, here's the thing. When it comes to IG clients, traders on our end, they're in majority sell territory when it comes to the S&P 500, the Dow, as well as the NASDAQ. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, but when it comes to COT speculators, they're also majority short when it comes to the S&P 500. They're actually majority buy in the Dow and the NASDAQ 100. And one thing we've noticed, and this is something we've also seen this on our end, is that a lot of times whenever you've got investors or, or family offices and investment firms, things like that, they're looking to hedge or protect against downside risk. You know, we go to the futures market, they'll also come to us, for example, and they look to hedge or put in a short position on, a, in, on an index that better represents their stock portfolio. So usually, it's going to be the S&P 500, or if they've got a lot of tech, the NASDAQ 100. So by default, you've got a lot more that might initiate sells or shorts when it comes to those two indexes, indices that aren't exactly trading it. So if you really want to look at momentum traders, what they're doing, it's the Dow 30 that has the highest, as of late, has had the highest correlation. So the price went up, boom, we saw the, the bias immediately go into heavy, uh, heavy buy territory when it came to COT speculators. Though interesting to note that both Dow 30 and NASDAQ 100 were the majority buy. That bias has been coming off as of late off these levels. So even momentum guys, are they getting a little bit shaky at these levels? We shall see. But let's go ahead and plot it onto the chart. Green dotted COT speculators, blue dotted for, for IG clients, taken from the left axis as percent long. That red dotted line, by the way, whenever you see the dotted line, blue or green below it, it means the majority short. Whenever it's above the majority buy, and take a look at that throughout this entire period of time, majority sell briefly went to 50-50 for COT speculators on, on the S&P when they, when they got to these lows. And then boom, when we had this move up, you saw a lot of them actually go deeper into majority sell territory. On the fundamental front, by the way, uh, you know, it's been a couple of things. You had earnings. And then we got the magnificent, the last of the magnificent seven was Nvidia last week. We got that out of the way. A lot of the flows and a lot of the movement, a lot of the euphoria has been based on the AI and tech front, AI slash tech front, I should say. Uh, you know, you look at even the week on week flows out of LSEG, uh, you can see that, you know, even in weeks where you have outflows for equities, they're still going into the tech sector. So the question is, when is the narrative going to shift? Because on the macro front, we've had some data that let's just say would normally be negative when it comes to risk appetite and usually result in a pullback. And I'm not just talking about the data, but as well as Fed members speaking, uh, you know, their reaction to that data. We got we had plenty last week, you know, Waller, Cook, uh, Kashkari, Harker, uh, Jefferson. The general mood is after January's relatively hotter uh, than expected CPI figures. Waller saying, you know, are we going to see, is that was that a speed bump or was that a pothole? Uh, so we do have plenty of items on offer this week. Uh, but you know, not much worry over, say, preliminary GDP at this stage for the U.S. You got the partial government shutdown deadline this Friday, by the way. But the real standout in terms of data is probably going to be this Thursday's PCE price index. And whether or not those figures are going to be hotter than anticipated, they're definitely going to be above, if you annualize the month-on-month -month readings, definitely going to be above the Fed's target. But are they going to come out? Are they going to be a disappointment and come out hotter than anticipated for the month of January? So that's about it from our end. do hope you enjoyed this video. As always, good luck out there. Thank <laughs> you.